Macs are growing fast. People aren't buying the AI Windows PCs because of the AI and AMD figured out how to shrink video games. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. I'm your bright host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, July 10th, 2024. We're gonna start off today talking about some good news over in the Apple space, specifically when it comes to their Macs and the related devices. You got the MacBooks and you got the Mac Studios and Minis and what have you. And it turns out that they've grown a little bit. They've increased in size, growing 6% year on year, which is higher than the PC market, which only grew 3.4% in the second quarter. So more growth coming from Apple, but that has to be taken with the understanding that the percentage is based on what they did before. So the percentage is higher, even though the total number of sales by Apple versus PC is lower. So they're growing more technically, but PC is definitely growing by a higher amount, even, but they had a bigger head head start, but this does put Apple in fourth place when it comes to the market share in terms of companies that sell computer products. They're now behind Lenovo, HP, and Dell, but they're in fourth place. People want them MacBooks for the various different things that they're doing with them. And I guarantee you somebody wants the first copy of Windows 95 because an ex-Microsoft employee showed off their July 14th, 1995 copy of Windows 95. As you can see right there, it's the original. It's an upgrade for the users of Windows. Hot off the assembly line, the first one that was ever released. On top of that, we also got details of people sharing their versions of Windows 95, including a special edition was meant for journalists, developers, and people who attended the launch event. So that's the special edition one that I personally have never seen. I haven't seen the original either. And so now we get to see what Windows 95 could have looked like if you weren't just a normie consumer. But Normie consumers definitely have feelings and opinions on the new version of Windows. Copilot Plus is what has been launching with the Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite chips. And it turns out, at least according to industry reports, people are not buying them because they're AI. Who would have thought? I'm terribly shocked. Turns out that launching only three features that utilize AI baked into the operating system, like co-creator Windows Studio effects and live captions with translation, has a minimal effect on whether or not people want it. Especially when you consider the fact that Recall, which was their most hyped AI product, didn't ship with it because it was concerning, at least according to the privacy side of things. So it's not included in these devices and there's no ETA on when they're coming out. But despite the fact that these Copilot Plus laptops did 20% of global PC sales during that first week, according to industry analysts, the reason people bought these has nothing to do with the NPU or any of that. It's the fact that it has better battery life. These Qualcomm Snapdragon chips have been purchased for their battery life characteristics, which based on all of the reviews that we've seen, typically only holds true when you're using them not at all, when you're watching videos or you're just browsing the internet, which is what a lot of normal use cases are. So there is value to be had there, but when it comes to actively using the chip, it's been found that the Snapdragon X Elites kind of compete with Intel and AMD when they're under load in terms of what battery life looks like. This is predictable. This makes a lot of sense. People with their functional use case with devices is I don't want to be plugged into a wall with my laptop. How long is it going to last for me? And that's what they're buying it based on, not because it has anything to do with AI. So with the AI 300, is that Ryzen 9 AI 300? They aim these new chips that are launching in a few weeks. Well, we're not sure about the battery life. These things are more powerful. They have better GPUs as far as we're aware because their current generation has better GPUs than the Snapdragon X Elite. We'll have to see, does AMD increase in sales because 45 top NPU, who freaking cares, right? That appears to be the sentiment. What am I gonna use it for that I can't use a graphics card for? I don't really know, but Intel did bet a lot on the battery life on their side of things, which is why they spent a lot of Intel tech tour in Taiwan talking about their power efficiency profile, not just their AI profile. So we'll see how this thin and light market shakes up, but Qualcomm off to a good start because it sips on the juice. And Reese sips on 
deals or you sip on his deals. He gives you the deals to sip on. You cuddle next to him and you sip on deals together. I don't know how it works. Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. It is Wednesday, my dudes. Hope you guys are doing well. And hey, wouldn't you know, we have some deals. Starting off today, we have the crucial P3 NVMe M.2 SSD. The one terabyte version is going for only $64.99, making it $25 off. But then next up, we have the Magnum Gear Neo Air 2, which is their mid-tower ATX case available in white for only $49.99 after the $20 rebate. And if you want to go even smaller, we've got the Fractal Design Terra Mini ITX case available in graphite for only $138.59, making it $41.40 off for what I think is still the best looking case design out there. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you back to Brett for the rest of your hard news. Cheers. Well, Reese, here's the deal with my fascination with raid cards. I like them because they go fast. It's like just extra performance. You stack SSDs together and they go super speed. And Tech Power Up got their hands on the High Point Rocket 1608A 8 slot M.2 Gen 5 card, which allows you to put eight Gen 5 SSDs together, slot them into a single Gen 5 slot and get maximum performance out of it. They tested it. I'm just including this because I really like it. Eight Gen 5 SSDs with Fizon controllers getting up to 57 gigabytes per second read, 51.1 gigabytes per second write. Just absolute mind boggling speeds. I would love to have this in my system, but be warned, consumes 219 watts when it's being utilized to its max capacity, which makes a lot of sense. I just, I think it's neat. I enjoy this. And NVIDIA enjoys AI, which is why they've been putting tensor cores into their GPU since 2018. But now they want to utilize that AI to make more AI capable GPUs. They're launching a contest to help build an AI data set so that they can better build graphics cards and hardware with the AI, specifically saying things like hardware design is limited because the data is limited. So they want to host this contest in order to make sure that they have a broader data set to use large language models to help make more AI large language model capable chips. The contest is going to start towards the middle of August and run until the beginning of October, at which point they'll get prizes for helping NVIDIA dominate the world and become the number one ever company with all of the AI, AI, whoa. -oh. Anytime I do that, it's your cue to like follow it up. You know that, right? I'm listening maybe 20% of the- it, Can I just get a what's popping tonight? What's popping tonight? Well, what's popping over on Geekbench is the 9700X and 9600X Ryzen 9000 chips. We've been getting benchmarks of the 9900X Ryzen 9 chip, nothing of the 9950X as of yet, but now the Ryzen 7 and 5 being sneak peeked over on Geekbench and the scores are where you'd expect them to be based on the 9900X score that came out a couple days ago. So the 9900X hosts the top single threaded score over on Geekbench currently at 3401, the 9700 X is slightly below that at 3312. The 9600X is slightly below that at 9284. That's because they have slightly lower clock speeds, so they would have a slightly slower single thread speed. This all makes a lot of sense. Their multi-core is lesser than the 9900X because they have fewer cores. 9700X has eight, 9600X has six, the 9900X has 12, so math. It's just looking good. It looks like reviewers are getting their hands on these chips. We're gonna have full detail third-party reviews probably sometime towards the end of July. Keep an eye on it. Let you know when the 9950X score drops because I'm curious to see if that actually outpaces the 9900X single core. That would be fantastic. And what's also fantastic, and not really, is the large game sizes that you've been having to deal with lately, especially with all of the large texture packs and all of that AMD wants to fix that. So at a conference, AMD showed off this technology to make sure that they can compress the texture using a neural net, reducing the file size of your video games, and then making it so that your GPU can actually do all of the decompression, making it so that it's more compact for you when you're downloading the game. And according to the paper that they published out of this, they can reduce the storage footprint by 70%. And that's while well, not changing anything with the shaders, maintaining this roughly same texture quality and making it so that it works very well, but you don't necessarily have to have a 310 gigabyte file of Call of Duty with all of them included. And then you still have to texture stream in the assets in order to get in the highest quality possible. So there's not a lot of details about how this is gonna be implemented into games moving forward, but especially as this technology is developed by AMD, it's part of their GPU open platform 
platform, which means that it's going to be more open for game developers to use instead of having to license whatever NVIDIA comes out with. We could potentially be seeing smaller game files come out, despite the fact that they are of higher quality, utilizing neural nets to help compress and make everything a little bit better. AMD trying to save gaming one piece of software at a time, which brings up an interesting editorial that I read recently about how AMD is really trying to pivot their company. One of the things that Jensen has said time and time again over the last few years with regards to how Nvidia operates, they are actually a software company that makes hardware to facilitate and accelerate the things that they're developing on the software side. That's why they push so much for DLSS and RTX and ray tracing and all of that. That's because they're focusing on the software development and then having hardware that helps to make it go faster. AMD was kind of the flip-flop inverse of that where they were making hardware and then coming out with software that kind of helped supplement it, but they were losing the race for that. But in the last few years, it seems like Lisa Su has kind of tried to pivot that and make it so that they're focusing first on software and then trying to have some hardware that helps to supplement it. We'll see if that strategy works out in the long term for them, but AMD looks to be in a good position to help change things for the industry moving forward. And you guys change me when I read your comments, especially when they're really mean and then I have to go cry in a corner. So let's get into what you said yesterday. Over on Floatplane, Northern Llama said, it's been too long since AMD released a new AM4 CPU. Micro Center exclusive 5650X3D, let's go. No, I don't think that's happening. I mean, we have the 5700X3D. That's out, it's affordable, it's not Micro Center exclusive. That came out after the 5600X3D. Then I, th I think they launched GT chips recently too. And then now we're getting the 57, 5800 XT and the 5900 XT. There are, there are aim for GPUs, the CPUs coming out. They're gonna launch at the end of the month. Let's just chill. And then Kryptonite said, I'm not a huge fan of more Windows stuff, but I'll take dynamic lighting over the 20 programs I need to control all my LED devices. I agree. I, I think that Microsoft having control of certain things doesn't make a lot of sense, but having control over hardware, it, communication, your operating system. It feels like that's one of the things it should do, and I don't need to download additional software to make all of that happen. Then over on YouTube, we got Kale Quad Zero saying, my dad just got all the parts to build his computer, so now we can play Helldivers together. Ayo, exciting, good times. Have fun with your pops. And then Paul saying, it's like being a Celtics fan in the 90s. A long haul of losing, but AMD is number one. I mean, the Celtics won the championship. Congrats to Boston. I'm walking here. That's what they say there, right, Kyler? Hey, I'm from Boston. There we go. Then we got the Dreadbug saying, with rumors being that the V-caches will stay the same, the 9800X3D is probably going to be a monster. I don't know how the, the V-cache amount staying the same translates into anything. It's like, it's that, that variable's holding steady, so that would, it's equal across both. How does that mean that the n new gen is bet? I don't, how did you infer that? I'm curious. And then we got L Greenman and Ajax saying, I think we need blooper reels. We need outtakes on the end of each video just for a giggle. Guys, if you wanna watch hot news without all of the editing in between, we literally live stream all of this over on Twitch. Right now, people are watching me film hot news live. You can see it happen. In case you want to, twitch.tv forward slash UFD tech. We're live, the, the stream's live all the time. We're live during our work day. So in case you want hot news in its raw, unedited, unfortunate version, the Twitch. Also, we give away PCs over on Twitch in case you want, it help, that helps to incentivize. So see you there. KLK saying the wildest thing in this video was Reese wearing a scarf when I'm currently sweating my behind off. He's on the Southern part of the world, which means inverted uh, seasons. But one of the things that Reese will do to no end is uh, complain about the temperature when it's actually quite nice. So you see, he's wearing a hoodie all the time. Sometimes he's wearing that when it's like 75 out. And then we get messages in our company WhatsApp where he's like, guys, it's so cold today. And I go look up the temperature in Pretoria and it's like 26 C. And I'm like, that's the exact same temperature that it is here, buddy. Regardless of climate control in my house, number one, I've lived there. So I know what it's like to be in their homes without central AC, I get it. But then number two, it's not that cold. But then right now when he's wearing the scarf, as of like the last couple days, they are in like a massive cold front where it actually dipped below zero Celsius. It was like 28 Fahrenheit. So and I'll let him be cold now, but a lot of the times he's faking. He's faking it, all right? I just let it be known that I 
Reese doesn't need to be acting as cold as he does. Now, now I'll see you next, next hot tomorrow. News, man.